What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we have a lot going on. We're gonna be doing some work on the FRS of course, and then I do wanna dive into the truck. We've had some parts laying around for the Duramax for a while, and today I wanna get them installed. Before I do that, we need to make space in the shop for that big ass truck. And I don't wanna get started on that until we get this thing 100% finished up. What we're gonna do today, rewrap the roof. We're not doing anything with the trunk cause I still, I just wanna wait until the new trunk gets here before we make any decisions. So wrap the roof, get the door handles back on, door seals, side markers, mirrors, and then reassemble the front end. And we should be pretty much all finished up with the FRS for now. There's still some more minor adjustments and changes that we're gonna make. Caliper color is gonna get changed and a few other goodies. But yeah, for now, let's just focus on those main things. Get this thing actually drivable, even though it's not really drivable because if you take a peek outside, we are getting slammed with snow today. So we probably won't drive the FRS anytime soon. I also just realized something kind of weird. Going into winter last year, I think I had one rear wheel drive vehicle and it was just the FRS. Now we have five. S2K, BRZ, FRS, Supra, M3. It's a whole lot of cars that we cannot drive in the snow. I think black roofs are the way to go on pretty much every car in the world. So we're just gonna peel off this older wrap and rewrap it black. Roof is all finished up and looks a million times better. Nice and glossy again. Let's start throwing some stuff back together. All the trim, moldings, side markers, all that good stuff can go back on the car. All right, all we have left is the front end. Headlights, bumper, bumper needs to be reassembled. 
with the lip, our splitter, the grills, and the DRLs, and the uh, badge as well, I guess. Gonna throw some more double side tape on the back side of this guy, and she gonna sit right there. First look at the completed FRS. Damn. It's insane. Well guys, here is the finished and final product of the wrap. When I first ordered this wrap, I was a little bit scared, a little bit worried I wasn't gonna like the outcome. Now that it's on the car, I don't think it could look any better. I think it turned out really, really nice. Drop a comment down below, let me know what you guys think. I'm stoked, super, super excited. It's a shame we can't drive it for a while unless the snow all of a sudden clears up before springtime. If we had a little bit of a break, we could probably take it out, but I ain't trying to get this thing totaled in all the snow that we're getting. Now, of course, the whole entire build is not done. We're still waiting on that trunk to show up. I do want to change the color of the brakes and maybe a few other little details here and there. I saw a few good comments about the hood yesterday. Really three options, four options. Leave a fully carbon, which I'm down with. It looks insane. Wrap the whole thing except for the vent area. Wrap only the vent area or wrap the whole thing. I don't wanna wrap the whole thing. I might do one of the other three. For now, I'm gonna leave it full carbon. I think with the carbon hood and the black roof and the wing and the carbon trunk when it shows up, I think it's gonna look sick. All right, I'm gonna clean up the shop a little bit get the truck in here and we gotta get some work done on the Duramax. That truck has not been touched for a while. It's not been in the shop for a while. So it needs some love. Not love, but some mods. I always forget how large the truck is until I pull it in the shop. It takes up the equivalent of about three cars. Fairly, fairly large. All right, we got two pretty cool additions for the Duramax today. This truck's amazing. I freaking love this truck. I put so many miles on this thing, never really had any issues. We did have a slipping transmission issue and it's still there if I turn it all the way up. Put it on race mode. If I leave it on like stock mode or I think it's economy mode, it's fine, it doesn't really slip, so. I'm sure eventually I'll take care of that, but for now, I just drive the thing. It's like the most deadly reliable vehicle I've ever owned. But I wanna make it a little bit better. So, box number one, 
is a giant, what is this, a 12.1 inch radio? It is so freaking big. I've been wanting one of these for a very, very long time, but I just couldn't bring myself to spend the money. And then I finally bought it. So here it is. I'm gonna consider this a early Christmas gift to myself and to the Duramax. They have a black and they had a gray. I wanted, it to, I wanted it to match as closely as possible. I'm extremely, extremely excited for this guy. I think it should be a fairly simple install. GPS antenna, rear view mirror, rear view camera, I mean. A whole lot of wiring. And to go along with this, we are also gonna be installing this dash cam. So it looks like first up, we just pop this gray bezel off. I don't know why, but I don't own like any plastic dash removal tools. <laughs> So I'll be very, very careful and use a flathead. There's two wiring plugins for the heat warm or the seat warmers. All right, now it looks like seven millimeter bolts holding in the whole entire radio and climate control. I believe all that should come out together. It looks like there are four bolts. Okay, pull out four bolts, two clips on the back side, and she pops out. This looks like a lot of work. So we may need to take some more stuff out of the dash. You can see back in there, there's all sorts of stuff in there, but if we don't need to, that'd be nice. I'm gonna start plugging some stuff into the radio, get all of the harnesses plugged into the new radio, and then I'm gonna see where all of that plugs into the truck. So we finally got the radio working. It took forever to figure out all the little finer details. The main thing is I cannot get the audio to work. And all we had to do, they included this little aux cable thing right here. I should have plugged that in. Apparently you leave that plugged in right there. Nothing on that side. And that's all we had to do to get the audio to work. And then this display was way off. So I had to go, oh my lord, sorry about the background noise. So we had to go into the factory set or the the settings on the radio. And then if you come down to install set, factory password is 666-888. I had to mess with the GM screen parameters and you can either go one through eight, I believe. Number two is perfect, so I left it on there. Backup camera works like it should. I thought it wouldn't. That's why I bought an aftermarket one. I'm not gonna install the aftermarket one because the stock one works apparently just fine. Last thing I need to figure out is why the CarPlay just shows waiting. Other than that, everything seems to be working like it should, which is exciting. This thing is pretty nice. I know the CarPlay is going to be something internal, so I'm going to go ahead and install the radio into the dash. We did get the steering wheel controls to work. We had to install the little adapter harness, but yeah, everything works and it looks sick. So let's go ahead, get it into the dash and see how it looks. All right, so here she is fully installed. Looks super, super nice. Ah, there we go. We had to connect it via Bluetooth. Hey, look at there. All the climate control works, which is fairly interesting how they integrated all that, but it works well. Up here we have the microphone, say if we want to take a call on the road. That little guy up there is our GPS antenna. So far, I'm super excited with it, super stoked on it. It fits fairly well. There's a little bit of a gap right here, but overall, she fits nice. Now the best part, there's two of them. There we go. All right, moving on to our Drive Slim Smart Mirror Dash Cam. So this guy right here, this goes directly over our rear view mirror. Let's hope it fits. So we have everything laid out here. There is quite a bit to this thing and it's fairly intricate. I'm excited to get it in the truck. And the reason I'm installing it in the truck is because this is the current daily. This is the power source. So we have to plug it into a cigarette lighter, another GPS antenna, 
I'll put that right alongside the one we just installed for our radio. This is the back camera or the rear camera, and then this is the front camera. With the rear camera, it looks like we do have to tap into some sort of reverse signal so it knows when the truck is in reverse. So that is probably gonna be the most complicated part. So it does not fit over the mirror in the truck, which really sucks because I was excited to use it in the truck. But yeah, there's no way it's gonna fit just because this mirror has all that stuff on the bottom there. And I don't even really know what it's for, to be honest, but it doesn't fit. I think the car I'm gonna be driving the most coming up is gonna be the FRS just because it got redone. Of course, it's not gonna be driven right now. And quite frankly, none of the cars are gonna be driven really much in the snow because we have the truck. So we are gonna be installing this dash cam in the FRS. I'll probably pick up more. If it's good, I'll probably pick up more for the other cars, but I just wanna test it out. So let's get it in the FRS. I'm gonna pull the truck out of the shop, get the shop cleaned up, and then we can go ahead, throw it in the FRS and see how nice it actually is. Because for the money, she better be bussing. We got the FRS front and center again. Let's go ahead and get this knocked out. First thing I wanna do is of course, make sure it fits our rear view mirror and check this out. It's actually gonna be perfect because I sat inside earlier as I was moving the car and look how crusty our rear view mirror actually is. That thing's like completely falling apart. Perfect, fits right over it. So now we just gotta strap it on using these little hooks right here. They just hook right around the backside. All right, we got her installed. Before I go ahead and run all the wiring everywhere, let's go ahead and make sure she actually works. So this is the power source. For now, I'm gonna use cigarette lighter. Long-term solution is going to be to hardwire it just so I can actually use a cigarette lighter for other things. GPS, it's easy. Front camera, that's gonna be super easy to run. Rear camera is gonna be a little bit more intricate. And for the reverse trigger wire, I'll just bump that right to our reverse light on the diffuser. That'll be super, super easy. All right, we got it to work. Everything's plugged in. So that is now gonna be what we see when we're driving around Spokane, the streets of Spokane. That is our new mirror. Well, not that right there. Wherever we decide to mount the camera, which will probably be license plate area. Let's get all this ran. Front's easy, power's easy, GPS is easy. Reader's gonna be a little bit tricky, but we'll get her figured out. All right guys, we got the system fully installed. Front camera is right there. Let's go ahead and check this thing out. That's what it looks like when you first fire it up. A little bit bright, we can go ahead and adjust. So I think it automatically starts recording as soon as you fire the car up. You can adjust where exactly you want the field of vision, I guess you would say, to be, which is super nice. Brightness adjust is up here. The Sony cameras on this thing are super high quality. So there is rear, we can go ahead and flip it to front. There's front or we can have both front and rear on at the same time, which is super nice. We have a speed over here. I believe that's lane assist. Can't really drive this thing in the snow, but I'm pretty sure that's lane assist. If you see a cool car driving down the road behind you or in front of you, go ahead, snap a photo. She also does have parking assist. So as soon as you start backing up, the parking assist does kick on. And if you wanna set up over speed alert to notify you when you're going over the speed limit, you can also set that up. FRS is too slow. We don't need that set up in the FRS. Overall, pretty stoked with the dash cam slash backup camera slash rear view mirror. It's an all-in-one speedometer, lane assist. It's got everything. If you want to pick it up, I'll link it down below. I think it's around $160, $170 on Amazon. One last look at the FRS. I pulled the wing off. She was just chilling on there. But one last look at the FRS before we go ahead and wrap up today's video. This thing turned out so dang good. Damn. That's going to be a wrap, my friends. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm going to go play in the snow in the truck with our new radio. Goodbye. See you tomorrow.